Super Mega Fan. Welcome to the 2019 Super Mega Fest. My name is David Ciccarella. Well, we're at the Sheridan Hotel in Framingham, Massachusetts for this exciting Comic-Con. We're going to be talking to special guests, people dressed in costume, and see a lot more. Let's go. I'm now with John Snyder, and how does it feel to be back at Super Mega Fest? It feels fantastic. It's a, it's a wonderful show. Love catching up with all my old friends. Uh, not only my old friends from the Dukes, but Carmen Electra and a bunch of folks that I've known throughout the years here. Tony Danza, I haven't seen him in a while, so it's, it's really great. Butch Patrick, it's terrific. I enjoy it. We spoke to John Glover at Rhode Island Comic Con. He said the one thing he learned from you on Smallville was the fight scenes. Oh, good. Well, he had all that hair, you know, so, you know, he's, you got to use your hair if you have it when you're doing a fight scene. I love John. And he caused Pa Kent to have died. Well, he caused me to have a heart attack. Yeah, well, actually, the great thing about Smallville, it, it wasn't that Lionel Luther caused Jonathan Kent to have a heart attack. It was Jonathan allowing his anger to get the best of him and have that fight that caused Jonathan to have his own heart attack. You know, nothing, nothing in Smallville was ever just black and white. And uh, so my heart attack in Smallville was really my fault. I want to talk about Christmas Cars, your upcoming new movie. Tell us a little bit about Christmas Cars. It's, uh, it's really a tribute to Dukes of Hazard on our 40th anniversary. It's my take on the flag issue. It's my take on the morality that was always evident in the Dukes of Hazard. I like to think I understand the pace of the Dukes of Hazard, and I have incorporated that into this movie. So it's, I wrote it and directed it, I'm in it, my wife produced it, and I can't wait for people to see it. You can see the trailer right now. Actually, probably by the time you see this, you can see the movie. Go to johnschneiderstudios.com, get your copy of Christmas Cars, or you can also download it at cineflixdod.com. I'd like to promote your new album as well. Could you tell us about what Johnny Cash told you about making a gospel record? Wow! Johnny Cash said I should do a gospel record a long, long time ago. And he said, when you do, and you will, he said, make sure that your song selection is perfect. So when you do a gospel album, you can't just throw a bunch of songs together. They have to mean something to you. So uh, House of Amazing Grace, which is Amazing Grace to the tune of House of the Rising Sun, has meant a lot to me for a long, long time. Uh, we have a song on there called Stained Glass that just gives me chills, another one called Recycling Grace that gives me chills. So all these songs mean something to me. They're not just music on a record. Every year you do Bose Extravaganza Yeehaw. down at John Snyder Studios. Yes. Tell us about that and why people should come. They should come because it's the greatest party you're going to have this summer. It's 4th and 5th of April. It's for my birthday, which is on the 8th of April. You'll get to see me jump a car. I'm going to jump a car again. Uh, first year we did it, we had Kix Brooks from Brooks and Dunn. Last year we had Kid Rock. And I'm not going to tell you who we have this year, but we just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Food in Louisiana is stellar. We have cast members from Dukes there. We have cast members from the Haves and Have Nots there. Two and a half day event. For me to say it's the biggest party in Louisiana is saying something because they can party in Louisiana. We can teach them a thing or two. So come on down. Bo's Extravaganza. Uh, you can check it out at johnschneiderstudios.com or just download my app. It's free. It's called John Schneider. It'll take you to everything. It's a stalker's best friend. I'm now with Tom Wopat, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? I'm having a big time. Now, you were in Django Unchained. How was that experience? Uh, Django is a great show. Tarantino's a terrific uh, uh, director and writer, and we had a blast. We had a great time. 
Awesome. And also, you came back to reunite with John Snyder, your Dukes of Hazard co-star on Smallville. How was that? Oh, that's that was a long time ago. That was that was a lot of fun. And they, you know, <laughs> threw us a bone here and there. We had a Dodge, and we went driving, and I had him climb in the window, et cetera. So it was fun. Now, you're doing a lot of music. Tell us about your crooner set that you do. I started out doing country music. In about 2000, I started doing some big band stuff. But then just last year, I, I put together a record that came out this, this summer, and it's a singer-songwriter stuff. So it's a little more back to the ritzier stuff. I'm now with Tony Danza. How are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? Oh, man, it's super. <laughs> no, it's great. It's been a lot of fun. A lot of, uh, you, know, you know, what's really interesting about these things is that the, the people that come are really, really so happy to see you. You just can't help but, you know, makes you feel really great. One thing I was always curious about is why is many of your characters named Tony? Well, I just uh, I have, a tr I have a hard time playing Dennis. So what can I say? I don't know. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> you know, it's, the the shows that uh, I played Tony on, I had nothing to do with the, with the uh, decision. So somebody seems to think I, I make a good Tony, I guess. You've been part of so many iconic TV shows and movies. What was it like working on Angels in the Outfield? Well, that is an iconic movie, and what I, I like most about it, aside from, you know, Chris and, and everybody, Matthew McConaughey's in it, Adrian Brody's in it. There's a lot of people in that show. I love what it, you know, it speaks to. It speaks to you got to believe, you got to try. You, uh, you know, it even had an anti-smoking uh, message in it. So it, it's, uh, it's quite a movie, I think. You've been doing such an amazing work doing your music career. Talk about that and just touring and playing the old great standards. Well, I'm a big fan of the American Songbook, <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, sometimes I wonder, because of the effect it's had on me, I wonder about the effect of today's music on today's youth, but uh, but it's just a lot of fun. I love to sing, I love to dance, I, uh, the ukulele came into my life, so I play a lot of ukulele in the show, and uh, it's, just, it's, it's just really a lot of fun, and people are surprised by the show because it's such a throwback to another time. With the shows like Taxi and Who's the Boss, when fans come up to you, they talk to you about these shows, what do you think the legacy of those shows are all these years later? Well, I, you know, I tell you the truth, I, I have an eight-year-old grandson right now. We just, both of us, got turned back on to Who's the Boss. We've been watching it together. And what's great about the show, you know, it's funny, the first show we watched was about, I was, I was going to be on a billboard to support reading. And I'm just wondering how many shows you could find today that are interested in promoting reading. You know, I mean, I think, uh, you know, it was just the kind of show that, uh, you know, there's 500 TV shows. Tell me one that tells a kid play by the rules anymore. So it, it, has, it has a spot, I think. I'm now with Harley Quinn, and how does it feel to be at Super Mega Fest? I love it. I'm here every year. I like your costume. Can you talk a little bit about it? Because you're not usually the classic Harley Quinn, but you have elements of that version. Well, I'm not quite the classic Harley Quinn either. I'm the uh, the Batman, the cartoon series. I don't know if you saw it in 2009. Yep. And uh, what do you want to know? I have a very big head. It's fun. Now there's a new cartoon based on you coming up on the DC Universe app. How do you feel about that? Oh, it's going to be great. How do you feel about Margot Robbie portraying you in film? I mean, her costume is like all over the place, but like Harley Quinn has like evolved over the years. So this is, you know, 2009, 2006, somewhere around there. So, I mean, it's the future now. Harley is Lady Gaga. She's going to wear whatever. So in that way, I don't think she has portrayed Harley. If anything, she's made her extremely popular. I'm now here with French Stewart. How are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? I am having a blast. I love it. I love it. Uh, I just been meeting people all day long and just talking. Uh, it's always nice to be in New England. Uh, we just did a, a big panel, and it was really great. A lot of great questions, so we're just having a great time. I love it. I love it. Now, you are hilarious as Harry on Third Rock from the Sun. Thank you. How oh, did yeah. you create the incoming message from the big giant head? Uh, you know what? I don't know. We, they, they just told me, oh, it should just, like, really? jolt you awake. I, uh... And so we just kind of would do it. But, you know, the thing that people don't realize is that to do it, it kind of hurts. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, I made this thing and now I'm going to be doing it for the next six years. But, uh, but yeah, it just, uh, a lot of that was just done on the fly. And, you know, somebody would get a good idea and we just always take the best idea. But a lot of fun. You also worked with William Shatner and John Cleese on The Rock. How was it working with both of them? Fantastic. Fantastic. Like, John Cleese and John Lithgow love working with each other because they're both tall. <laughs> so nobody has to stoop down and me and William Shatner just hit it off for some reason we just like we just really hit it off and we just always had a good time you know 
with me and William Shatner, it's like if you get a dog and a dolphin together and they just, they just love each other for no logical reason. Did you like how the show ended? Oh, I did. Yeah, I really did. I loved it. feel really uh, complete about it. People always ask, you know, are you guys going to reboot it? Are you going to reboot it? And we're like, no, nah, we're good. <laughs> we're good. You know, we'll just, uh, we'll just sit on it. Thanks, though. <laughs> Isn't it amazing to see Joseph Gordon-Levitt's career yeah. skyrocket and yeah. he, him doing such amazing work? He's fantastic. He's fantastic. And, he, and he's such a good guy. If I do a play in a 60-seat theater, he'll come, you know? He'll bring his mom, you know, I'm friends with her still, and uh, uh, just a great guy. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for him. He, he just, uh, you know, he's just enjoying his children and his career, and it's lovely. You also play the iconic Inspector Gadget. How yeah. was it stepping into that role? Oh, I, I love it. I love it. It's, uh, it's sort of this strange honor where you get to be a part of this character's lineage in a way, where, you know, you have a crack at it. And I, I think that also they're, gonna, they're thinking about rebooting it, and so it'll be interesting to see, like, who takes it over. But, you know, it's a, it's a nice club to be a part of. And now I've got a six-year-old daughter, and she watches it. It's really cool, you know, it's really cool. All the children's movies that were just, you get beat up making because they're just physical, and she's still enjoying them, so it's, it's worth it. Now, what current projects you have coming up? I'm on Mom now with Alice and Janney and Anna Ferris, and I come in and out and do those. I just did a show Limetown with uh, Jessica Beale, and uh, those are all streaming now. And so I just kind of hop from thing to thing, and uh, you know, a little bit of everything. I'm now here with Spider-Man. How are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? Uh, you know what? It's a nice change of pace from saving the world, you know? Uh, I don't have a purple crazy titan floating around here, at least not yet. Uh, but it's been a blast so far. A lot of great events, a lot of great people. Good food, too. <laughs> Did you see Nichols Hammond, the original Spidey? You know, I have not had a chance to hop over there and see him yet, but I'm trying to go get an autograph signing from him, so... Let's make it quick. You got to swing on over there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Maybe if I uh, give it a little snap, rewind time a little bit. <laughs> I'm now with Nicholas Hammond, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? I'm enjoying it very much. Everybody here is so kind. I'm really finding it fascinating being here in the Massachusetts, Boston area. Everybody's lovely, beautiful day, and a fabulous crowd, so it's great. And I'm really, really pleased to see how many people still appreciate the old um, original Peter Parker Spider-Man series, as well as some of the other films I've been in over my, my career. So it's a, it's a really, really fun day. How was it putting on that Spider-Man costume? Well, it was strange at first because I'd never played a superhero before. And also it was a little bit of a learning curve with the costume department in getting a suit that would move freely, that wasn't too hot, that didn't make you sweat too much. But we finally got there. We, we, we went through three or four different versions of it before we found something that really kind of approached what today would be Lycra, you know, uh, a very stretchy material. And then it was fine. It was just easy putting it on. And how did they do the special effects of you shooting the web? In those days, of course, we didn't have CGI, we didn't have computer-generated imagery, so we basically just had to do it somewhat mechanically. I mean, I had web shooters in my hands, they had compressed air in them, and they shot out, do you remember a thing, maybe you're too young, but it, there, was a th there was a thing when I was a little kid called silly string, and you shot it out of a can, and it would harden. Basically, that's what it was. And so we had this stuff, and it was some kind of a liquid goo, but when it went shooting out with compressed air, and it would harden in the air and turn into the web. How does it feel to be the first actor to play the ever live-action Spider-Man? Well, I feel really honored. You know, I created the role of Peter Parker. Now, obviously, it's taken on a huge life of its own. But I will always be uh, happy and honored about the fact that I was given the opportunity to create the role. You were also part of the iconic episode of The Brady Bunch where Marcia, the football yes. hits her nose. How is it looking back at that episode? Well, you know, uh, playing Doug Simpson on Brady Bunch at the time, you think, oh, well, I'm just coming on for a few days to play a guest role on this, what was an iconic series. You know, they were famous on The Brady Bunch. And to play Maureen McCormick's boyfriend, was, I thought was really great because she was so adorable. 
But what we didn't realize was that that particular episode, the subject was noses, was going to go on to become, as you say, an iconic episode for the show. So again, I feel I feel very lucky that in my lifetime I've done a, I've done a number of jobs that have kind of had a life that is carried on long after we made them. The Sound of Music, Brady Bunch, Lord of the Flies, and now Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. All of which seem to look like they are going to be remembered long after the time we made them. Now, how was that experience on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Well, it was wonderful. I mean, working with Quentin Tarantino and Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, uh, Timothy Oliphant and Luke Perry. Uh, I was working with some of the best people in the world and it was a huge honor and and very exciting and i think the work is really good i think i think it's a wonderful movie i think quentin tarantino is a genius and i was just uh, thrilled to be included we talked to angela Cartwright last oh, yes. year about sound of music what memories do you have of working in austria oh well i remember it very clearly you know we worked in austria for three months fortunately i was old enough i was 14 so i can remember every single day we had a lot of rain we had a lot of days of sitting uh, back at the hotel waiting for the weather to clear, but the filming was wonderful. It was beautiful being there. You know, our, our locations were beautiful. We were working with Julie Andrews every day. It was just like a heaven job. And people like Angela and, you know, all of them, Kim Carrath, Debbie Turner, Dwayne Chase, Heather Menzies, Charmian Carr, they became my lifetime friends. And Angela, I spoke to Angela this morning. We still speak all the time. We're very, very good. We're, we're siblings. We are siblings. What current projects do you have coming up? I have a film I'm going to be doing in L.A. that I start in January. I have a miniseries I have written uh, that we hope will be filmed by Netflix in March. So I've got at the moment I kind of go back and forth between writing and acting. And so I've got those two things, and then there's another big project back in Australia that I might be doing later at the end of the year, fingers crossed. Well, we're going to do something really cool here. I'm going to put on the Spider-Man mask, and Nicholas is going to sign it. And there you go. From Spidey to Spidey, thank you. Congratulations. You are now officially a member of the Spider-Man Club. I'm now with Loretta Swinton, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? Uh, it's uh, lovely. People are wonderful. The fans and the friends you make, you know, uh, it's it's a lovely thing that happens. Mash is such an iconic show. How does it feel to look back and just see all these fans treasure it after all these years? Yes, it's um, well, it's amazing. It's never been off the air, and it's really uh, a phenomenon. And these Mash marathons over the weekend, and you know. Uh, the, the, the littlest groupie <laughs> knows MASH really well. It's a, it's a family show that has been passed on traditionally every year, every generation. It's particularly wonderful for me because I can talk about my charity and I can talk about my book, collection of my paintings. Mostly they're animal paintings. Proceeds from the sale of the book go to the charity, which is Sweetheart's Animal Alliance. What I love about MASH, not, not only the amazing acting, but I love the sets they used for MASH. It felt like you were really in the Korean War. How was it just being on those sets and having that experience? They were remarkable sets. From A to Z, I think uh, everybody did such an incredible job. Everything was just so authentic. When I went to Korea uh, and I saw the mountains that were that we used to, to uh, fabricate uh, the choppers coming over the mountains at the beginning of the show, and I thought I was having deja vu. It was exactly right, the, the mountains. They did remarkable, remarkable uh, work. The outdoors set as well, uh, replete with rats and fleas and, you know, pretty close to how horrible it can be. Recently you reunited with your co-stars on Alan Alda's podcast. That's how correct. was that? <laughs> Great fun. I'm sure if you listen to it, you know what a f uh, we're a close family. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. And we're never really out of touch. I'm now with the Bat of Fall River. How does it feel to be at Super Mega Fest? Oh, it's awesome. This is my uh, first time here, and I, I love it. I'm here. I was here both days, and super busy. So many great cosplays. So many great uh, people that were here. It was an amazing weekend. It's kind of tough talking to you because I can't see your eyes. Is it tough to see everything? Um, as long as it's straightforward, I can see, but I have no peripheral vision. Like, it's the worst. Just like Michael Keaton Batman. Pretty much. I, I turn like 89 Robocop, you know. 
And what inspired you to dress as this type of version of Batman? I really love Jim Lee's Hush and to be able to try to bring that to life. That was what my goal was. And I think I did a pretty decent job. I think you did too. You, you so you made it all yourself? No, I have I have a friend who's a, a tailor. He he helped me make the suit, and then just uh, like a cowl maker, uh, Hernandez FX made the cowl. Now I'm here with artist Tim Estilos, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? I'm having a great time this year. A lot of the fans have been coming by. We've been having a lot of fun. Been seeing a lot of great cosplay, and I got to meet Nicholas Hammond, who is the original live-action Spider-Man. It's been a it's been a blast this year. What are you working on right now? Well, right now I'm working on a portrait. It was one of my fans came by the table, and she wanted to me to draw her as Loki, but a female Loki. So. I already put in the pencil work and now I'm, you know, inking it with a brush. Old school style because I like doing it the artwork traditionally, so put in the pencil, then take a brush and add the ink and then we'll color it a little bit later. Because that's one of your specialties, drawing people as superheroes. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of artists have their own little niche. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I came up with the idea of turning people into their own superhero. So I'll take a photo of them, and so I'll get their, put their face on it, and then whether they want to be their body form to be drawn the way they normally are, or if they want to be, you know, made muscular or very voluptuous, I can do it that way. But basically, they just tell me what superhero. And there was a guy last year, actually, he wanted a combination of the two. So he loved The Flash, and he loved Iron Man. So he sort of created his own costume. So you know, basically, I say, if you can dream it, I can draw it. So just bring it on. I can draw it for you. I'm now with Edward Furlong, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? I'm doing great, man. I, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot, man. How amazing is it that Terminator 2 is such a beloved and iconic film all these years later? It blows me away, man. I knew it was going to be big, but I had no idea how long it would last and that it would be one of these movies that children that are like, you know, 10 years old are still coming up and saying how much they love that movie. So, dude, yeah, it's got staying power. It's awesome. Now, when you're doing those scenes with Arnold and Robert, when they say cut, are they out of character or do they pretty much stay in character? I'd say Robert stayed in character. I mean, he was he was always like, you know, very intense and into it. He actually stayed in character for like crazy. I was driving home one day and I see Robert outside my house smoking a cigar and I'm like, what the f what are you doing? And then, and then he's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm just moved here. And he like moved next door to me. So he was actually following me in real life. So I guess he was like really staying in the character. Arnold's just a blast to work with, dude. Arnold is, I mean, I think he's a genius, dude. I think he's so smart. He's so funny. I looked up to him so much. You were also part of another cult classic, Detroit Rock City. How yeah. was it working on that film and even being around Kiss? Oh, dude, it was awesome. That was one of my favorite movies to work on. I, uh, I loved it. We got to live like rock stars for a couple months, you know? and actually like hang out with Kiss and go backstage and fly on the Kiss jet. And I don't know, it was just, it was really, really cool, man. It was really cool. I'm now with James DeBello and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? I'm having a blast, it's so much fun. Really like it here. Everybody's so nice, it's really relaxed, like super chill. Good vibes, good vibes. Now how does it feel to be part of Detroit Rock City and that it's still as popular as ever? I mean, it's great. You know, I was 18 when I did it. Now I'm older. You know, it's about a bunch of kids going to see a KISS concert, and KISS fans are the best fans in the world. So now I have this whole community of people that, you know, I dig, too. And so, I mean, you can't beat that. You're with Eddie Furlong, yeah. and how is it being reunited with Eddie? Oh, well, me and Eddie go way back. We're really good friends. We've done a bunch of these together, not maybe like 20 over the past two years. So it's been awesome. It's a lot of fun. Makes the weekend a lot more special. What was another movie that you were really proud on working on? Cabin Fever. A lot of people really like that. And then Scary Movie 2, because I think the Wayans brothers are the funniest family in show business. So. How was it working on that film? It was amazing. It was just, I, a lot of times I just got paid to hang out. Like I wasn't even on camera, but I'd just sit on set and watch them work. It was a lot of fun. And with Cabin Fever, you worked alongside Ryder Strong? Yeah. Ryder's the best. He's a great dude. There's another familiar face this year at Super Mega Fest that I talked to last year. Let's see if he's here. Oh, it's you again.
again. Hi, Oscar. How are you doing Super Mega Fest? Rotten. Why? Because it's Super Mega Fest. But isn't it fun to meet all your fans? It's horrible. And horrible means good. So, yes, it's Super Mega Fest is awesome. Did you recently meet Carol Spinney? Yes. He's, he's more of a grouch than I am. And that was at Rhode Island Comic Con. Yep, we've seen him at Rhode Island. We've traveled around with him a few times. Oh, that's awesome. Are you friends with Big Bird? Yeah, he annoys me though with all his singing and counting and alphabets. I can see why. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're having kind of a good time a here at Super Mega Fest. A rotten time. Right. He's uh, having a rotten time. Well, stay in your can. Yeah, I, I, I have a wish. What's that? I wish you go away. <laughs> and that's my cue. Bye. I'm now with Elizabeth Shepard, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? Oh, I'm having a great time. It's, uh, what is interesting, you know, I'm in a room where there are crowds and crowds of people for some, uh, some of the guests. But the certain ones have made such a special journey to see me <laughs> that it makes their day and it makes my day too, you know? You were in The Omen too. How was that experience working on that film? I had to get my eyes pecked out. That was very interesting to work with the birds. And the bird wrangler was the same man who did the birds for the birds. In order to, I was supposed to have a, a fiberglass mask of my own face over my face. Mike Hodges, the original director, said we can't do close-ups. So the actor bird, he was tied to my, uh, to my wig um, and uh, I was handed hamburger um, to prevent him <laughs> pecking my eyes out. So it was uh, quite an adventure. You also worked with Vincent Price. How was that experience? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Vincent Price, you know, people really don't realize what a wonderful classical actor he is, was. And these films, the Gothic Poe films, you know, with the heightened language, extraordinarily big emotional circumstances, you know, he was, uh, he was just brilliant to work with. And he welcomed me like a fellow actor, and what a, what a lovely person he was. Nobody ever had a bad word to say about Vincent Price. Very accomplished anyway, you know, I mean, with his connoisseur of the arts and a wonderful cook, but just a, a most generous and delightful person. You also did some voiceover work, Silver Surfer naming one. How was it being part of that Marvel world? Oh, well, the Silver Surfer, yes. I was infinity. I was one of the gods of the universe, and John Neville was eternity. I still have the Silver Surfer jacket, which my son will inherit, but not yet. <laughs> um, it was fun, and you know, we were all set for the next series, but then there was a quarrel between the lawyers for Marvel and whoever else was producing. It was very disappointing that it ended. Very disappointing. What current projects do you have coming up? I'm still a working actor, but when I'm not acting, I teach Shakespeare at the Stella Adler studio. So I teach young actors. So uh, when I'm not doing this, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm living with Shakespeare, which is, which is not a bad thing to do. <laughs> I'm now with a pro wrestling legend, the one and only Ted, the million dollar man, DiBiase. How does it feel to be at Super Mega Fest? Hey, I'm having a great time. You know, I, I love the environment. Of course, uh, being a pro wrestler, I've had to apologize for a lot of broken furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, at Super Mega Fest, Mean Gene Okerlund was here. What was it like being around Mean Gene? Mean Gene was one of a kind, you know, and he was a great guy. Um, what was funny is that um, when I went to work for the WWE, as it's now known, Gene was already there, and I said, Gene, your voice sounds so familiar. I said, where could I have possibly heard your voice before? And he said, you're from Omaha, Nebraska, right? I said, yeah. He said, you ever heard of a guy named Jerry Mack? I said, K-O-I-L-Wadio. 
He said, I was, I was Gary Mack. <laughs> so I had been listening to Gene as a kid on the radio and didn't even realize it. Great guy and on the microphone and doing what he did, he was one of the very best. Back in the 90s, your mystery partner was The Undertaker all those years ago. Can you believe how The Undertaker just grew and grew from that first appearance with you? It's unbelievable, you know, and I like, people ask me all the time, uh, they say, well, you introduced The Undertaker. I said, well, I introduced him simply because it was part of the script. I mean, it wasn't Ted DiBiase who brought The Undertaker her into the WWE. F. I saw Mark is his real name. I saw Mark's talent early on. I said for anybody to have a wrestling match and have to almost move in slow motion, that's not easy to do. But I don't think anybody foresaw the magnitude and the longevity of that character. I mean, and, and God bless him. Good for him. Recently, you were on the WWE when you bought the 24/7 championship. How was that coming back and actually buying that title? It's all in the script, but no, that was a lot of fun. I guess I set another record as being the shortest lived 24-7 uh, champion. I think I had it about an hour. <laughs> How does it feel to have one of the most iconic laughs in pro wrestling? Once again, I have to give credit to Vince McMahon. The Million Dollar Man character was Vince's personal idea. The show would be on nationally, but we would do the interviews for the individual markets. And so I was doing interviews with me and Gene, and I happened to end one of the interviews, and I laughed like that. Well, Vince just happened to be walking by, and he heard it, and he stuck his head in the door, and he said, that's the Million Dollar Man, and I want to hear that laugh every time you cut an interview. And that laugh is just really, it's an over-exaggeration of the way I normally laugh. And of course, I have a very deep voice, so... That carries, and so, you know, I tell everybody, I said, I had a 19-year active wrestling career. And so what am I remembered most for? <laughs> and remember, everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. I'm now here with artist Aaron Bulldog, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? That's great so far. What do you bring to the con? Uh, so I have a bunch of prints and uh, original illustrations. Some of them are like my own creation, some of them are fan art. So. And what got you interested in uh, coming to conventions to try to sell your art? Well, I, I've been drawing for most of my life, and um, you know, I, I just wanted to try selling them. One of the first conventions I went to was Boston Comic Con, so that kind of got me excited thinking that I could table here myself. And what do you think are some of the most popular characters that people ask you to draw? Definitely Batman is pretty, pretty popular. You recently did a Spider-Man. Talk about what went into making Spider-Man. Um, so I, I know that the, uh, the client wanted kind of a classic look. So I definitely tried to make sure that he wasn't, you know, super muscular. Um, you know, pretty, a pretty standard, pretty standard uh, original Spider-Man. So. And what tools do you use to, to make that? So these were, it was originally sketched in pencil and then uh, inked with um, Copic ink markers and then colored with Copic markers also. How long does it take you to draw one of your art pieces? It depends on, you know, the size of the piece and the style and everything, but for a commission here, it could be anywhere from like maybe two hours to, it, sometimes it can take the full day. Now you have a photo of Thanos. How long did that take you to draw and what went into that? So that was a digital illustration. I, I drew that in Photoshop. That took me, I, I actually did it right after the movie came out because I was excited. So um, that took me about Three days total, I would say. I'm now with Anthony Forrest, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? I'm enjoying it. I, I, this is the second time I've done the show, and many years ago, I think it was 2008 when I did it the first time, and when they invited me back again, I said definitely yes. How does it feel to be part of such an iconic franchise like Star Wars? I feel very blessed. One of the things that I really appreciate is the fans. I'm a fan of the fans. I've learned a lot of stories. I learned a lot about filmmaking from the fans because I, it's a good way to get the feedback on what's working and what isn't. Well, you were part of so many iconic scenes. These are not the droids you're looking for. Well, those scenes, we, uh, those were shot in Tunisia. It was really not intended for me to play that, do, do that scene, but uh, George Lucas came along and asked me and he said, can, can you do me a favor and, and do this scene with Alec Guinness? Uh, and it was, he said, it won't affect the fixer scenes, which were already also being shot in Tunisia. And so I said, sure, let's do it. And that's, it's just amazing how that scene has become so famous. Now I'm standing with... Carl. And? 
Uh, Carl. <laughs> and who are you dressed as today? Corporate Darth Vader, but I decided to put a Disney spin on it. I like that. What, what inspired you to dress like corporate Darth Vader? Well, we started to do the corporate version a couple years ago. The Disney thing came on because at a suggestion of an artist that I met at a con, he talked about how Disney has bought Star Wars. So I started out with the logo on the briefcase. And then the helmet was actually literally driving home from work Thursday afternoon before this con. I said, oh, i got to put ears on the helmet. That's a nice touch. And who are you dressed as? I'm his first officer. <laughs> well, someday, will the first officer become Vader? Um, not if I like to keep my head. <laughs> I'm now with Michael Beck, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? I'm having a great time and meeting a lot of wonderful people. That's one of the main reasons to come to these, to meet the folks that give you a career. Well, The Warriors is such an iconic, legendary film. What do you think the appeal is so many years later of that great film? It's a story of the falsely accused, everyone's out to get them, trying to get home. So we all, in some way, whether it be a nightmare of that or whatever, relate to that kind of story. So I think that's probably the hook. And then, you know, Walter Hill had a, a wonderful vision. Uh, you know, it's the picture looks cool, and there's a great soundtrack as well. And how does it feel to be reunited with a lot of your cast here at Super Mega Fest? That's the most fun thing about it. it. We're 40 years on in this movie, and we're still friends, still love each other, and still love getting together, so this gives us an opportunity for that to happen, so it's great. What other current projects do you have coming up? I just completed John Grisham's latest audiobook, uh, uh, The Guardians, and I've got two or three other audiobooks that are in process. I do a lot of that right now. I'm now with Terry Micus, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? Well, I always enjoy the shows because they treat us good, and the Warriors fans, they're rabid. Some people come here and they don't even know who the Warriors are, but a lot of people come here and, and we're destination, and they love the movie. They know the lines, they come here, they're excited when they see us. So I try to engage them all, all the Warriors do. Now, why do you think that film has a cult appeal and it being more and more popular with every passing year? It does depict New York in the 70s, which is not New York now. It has a very stylized appeal that brings people back to a time in some ways people long for. Also, it's, it's like someone once said, it's like the Wizard of Oz. We're just trying to get home. I mean, we're trying to get home through the Lizzies and the Orphans and through the Furies. And they were trying to get home through these flying monkeys and uh, the Wicked Witch. There's no place like home. Now, how does it feel to be reunited with your cast here at Super Mega Fest? Uh, the thing about this cast is we all remained very close. Laugh a lot, pray together sometimes, have a good glass of wine. But casts aren't always like that when you're talking about eight, nine guys. And we all just get along. We all really laugh. Um, I love it. Now I'm here with Dwight from The Office. How does it feel to be at Super Mega Fest? It feels pretty good. What inspired you to dress like Dwight? Uh, people telling me I looked like him. And at the time, I had never seen the show. And I was very disappointed to look like that guy until I watched the show and he became my favorite character. That's awesome. And uh, how did you pick out that nice outfit? Where did you get it? Uh, a little combination of uh, TJ Maxx and Amazon. I'm now with Brian Tyler, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? So far, so good. Excellent show. Can you believe that the Warriors have such a great passion? The film is still as popular as ever so many years later. It's actually very unbelievable. Every year that I come to one of these cons, I keep thinking, well, you know, it's played out. Nobody's going to show up to this thing. Nobody cares about the Warriors. They, it was a good movie. I'm amazed to this day, 40 years later, we get so many people, and now even their children, come and love the Warriors. And you're reunited with most of your cast here at Super Mega Fest. How does that feel? It's always wonderful to be next to the guys and the gals and from the movie, absolutely. And how was it working with the director on that film? Well, it was excellent. It was my first film, so it was a learning experience for me. It was a job, but it was a learning experience. Uh, but apparently, it turned out to be a very good blending of some very talented people, so I was very happy to be a part of that. I'm now with Deborah Van Volkenberg, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? 
It's fantastic. It's mega. <laughs> the Warriors is such a classic, iconic film. Why is it as popular as ever in 2019? It's a mystery. I don't know. I really don't know, but we're so fantastically grateful. And, and I will say, it's getting passed down from generation to generation. I'm just flabbergasted, really. It's the, the most amazing thing that could happen because it didn't have a long life in, in the beginning. Initially, it was short-lived in the theaters, not because people didn't like it. It was just maybe too, too excitable. I don't know. <laughs> so we're just fascinated and grateful. How does it feel to be reunited with your cast here at Super Mega Fest? It's always good. We're like eternally connected. We're like glued together. So it's always great to see everybody. We're like crazy tribal family. You were also part of a great sitcom in the 1980s, Too Close to Comfort. How was it working with the legendary Ted Knight? It was fantastic. He was very funny. He was my dad away from home. He took his comedy seriously. We had to be like on the ball on Monday. But he was incredibly funny on and off camera. We learned a lot from him. When I first met him, he did his impression of Vaughn Monroe, who was a crooner, and he did an excerpt from a song, and it's the exact same song and crooner that my dad used to imitate at home. So I knew I was in the right place. Now I'm standing with? Brianna. And? Savage. And what are you dressed as today? I'm dressed as the Pokemon name Lucario. Oh, very interesting. And you? I'm dressed as a racer Bowser. Why did you pick those characters to dress up as? Honestly, I've always wanted to cosplay, so this is my, actually my first cosplay that I made. He helped me out, of course. So I just wanted to do a Pokemon because it's actually my favorite franchise. Very cool. How about yourself? Well, Bowser doesn't get a lot of love, especially now that uh, Bowsette just came out. Well, not just came out, but <laughs> she's been uh, all over the place, so I'm bringing Bowser back. I'm now with Bobby Mannix, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? It's very, very, very much fun. A lot of great, the fans are the best. The fans are really great. The Warriors fans are the best of the best. They're so kind. And you were the costume designer for the, the Warriors. costume designer on the Warriors. I did all the costumes, all the patches, all the gang patches, and all the makeup designs for the Baseball Furies. Um, we had 120 gangs and it was 10, get, 10 members deep. So we had about 1,200 people in town, it was a lot. So how did you come up with the initial designs for the... I'll tell you exactly. We had a list of names of the gangs, which of course triggered the images. However, if I had just done ordinary work, everybody would have been in leather or denim. So I, had to I divided everybody by color, and then I would come up with a theme for them, and it worked out. It obviously worked out. Look at all this. And the Warriors, the Warriors individually, of course, have different character names. After I get the basic things done with them, their character names triggered their clothes. Like David Harris was Apache, so that's a very Indian thing. So it was like that. And here we have the two original prototype for the movie, the vest and the original Lizzie shirt, which is pretty amazing. They've been around for a long time. Do you find it amazing that the Warriors have such a legacy? Yes, of course. I actually have two movies that I did. One was The Warriors, the other one was Xanadu, which are huge, you know, big followings, which both surprised me, yeah. What other movies did you work on as co costume designer? Xanadu, The Long Riders, with all the acting brothers, the Keaches, the Quades, the Carradines, and the Guest Brothers. Uh, I did End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I did um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, a lot, but I've done 2,500 commercials. I'm now with Dorsey Wright, and how are you enjoying being at Super Mega Fest? I'm enjoying myself a lot, having fun. The Warriors is such an iconic, classic film. How does it feel that it's still as popular as it was back in the 80s? This is amazing to me. If it wasn't for the fans, I'd be home watching television. If it weren't for fans really enjoying this film, what is this, 40 years later? Really, what would it have meant? You know what I mean? It's like if the fans don't like it, they don't come out. So it's not a big deal for me to come here. It's a big deal for me to see people, and this is for real, to see people actually come up 40 years later and go, I saw the film yesterday with their kids, or I saw it when my brother introduced it to me or my father introduced it to me, and I'm going, and people are still watching this film? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's amazing. How does it feel to be reunited with your cast here at Super Mega Fest? I see these guys all the time. It's no big deal. No, I'm... <laughs> 
<laughs> but when we get together, genuinely, we're friends. I mean, there's, we're like a family. We have skirmishes, but it's nothing big that we can't get together and be stuck in a hotel room again for another two, three days. So. Now I'm standing with? Virgil from Devil May Cry 5. Wow, your costume looks great, so you're from a video game. That is correct. And what are you holding in your hand here? The Yamato, a katana. Can you show us? Wow. My reaction, that was a real reaction. That's, that's impressive. That's how you do it. Now I'm with David Harris, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? Oh, fantastic. I'm having a great time. It's a great uh, turnout. The fans are fantastic. They're having a great time. The promoters of the show are just absolutely fantastic. We're all happy. We're having fun, and that's what it's all about. The Warriors is such a cult film, and it's even popular in 2019 as it was when it came out. Why do you think it's as popular as ever? I think the, the, the longevity of the film is because... Walter created something so magical. It's timeless. I mean, young kids are playing the, the video game by Rockstar. They're discovering this movie. Uh, their grandparents saw the movie, and their parents saw the movie, and now they're watching the movie. And these college kids are just dressing up as the Warriors and all the different gangs in the movie for Halloween. So it just goes on and on and on and on and forevermore, long live the Warriors. You are reunited with your cast here at Super Mega Fest. How does that feel? Oh, it's great. Anytime I come together with my brother and our honorary sister here, it's big fun. I mean, we, we, we love each other, we enjoy each other. It's a lot of fun. Every time we get together, it seems like 40 years have never passed by. I mean, uh, so it's just, it's a, it's, it's a blessing. It's a real blessing. And to all those Warrior fans out there, can you dig it? I'm now with Tom Waits, and how does it feel to be at Super Mega Fest? It feels super to be, it feels super mega to be at Super Mega Fest. The Warriors is such a classic film. Why do you think it's popular in 2019 as it was when it came out? I suppose it's because it was very well directed. Despite the fact that I didn't get along with the director, I think that he did a really great job. And more importantly, I think the cameraman, Andrew Laszlo, Andy Laszlo, he had a look that was prescient. You know, the film has a <clears throat> an otherworldly, surrealistic quality that captured not really what New York City was like at that time, but what it very much could have been like seen through the eyes of Walter Hill. How does it feel to be reunited with most of your cast here at Super Mega Fest? Oh, it's great. We, we, we get along really well. We have a lot of laughs together. You know, we were kids, man, and we kind of landed on a beachhead together, you know? Now, what current projects do you have coming up? So I recently closed the production of Love's Labor's Lost that I set in Woodstock. I used the music from Woodstock and melded it with Shakespeare, it was awesome. And before that, Kelsey Grammer did a reading of a musical that I wrote called McCare. I wrote the book, the music, and the lyrics. I'm now with David Calabrese, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? Oh, it's a good time. You get to see a lot of cool artwork and uh, meet a lot of people that got tons of cool stuff, and it's kind of like uh, reliving uh, my childhood. And you're one of the artists here. I am, yeah. I do uh, fantasy art. Um, this is all done digitally in Photoshop. Characters, environments, a couple of uh, actual uh, traditional pieces available as well. You say it's done in Photoshop? How do you do it in Photoshop? Literally with the uh, Wacom tablet, I paint in the program Photoshop. Yeah, that's it, just on the computer. So nothing done with oils or acrylics, just, yeah, all digital. What inspires your pieces? I just always loved fantasy as a kid, and so I uh, finally got to uh, my age now. I said, you know what the heck with doing artwork for other people? I'm going to do it for myself. So I'm just kind of reliving uh, my childhood. Childhood uh, dreams. I'm now with Tony Daniels, and how are you enjoying Super Mega Fest? I'm having a good time. In fact, it's like. Forget the rest, I'm at Super Mega Fest. I can't get no rest at Super Mega Fest. So much to do, so many things to see. Everybody's getting happy. Yeah. 
at Super Mega Face. <laughs> you voiced Gambit in the classic X-Men cartoon. How did it feel to voice such a legendary character? Truth be told, first it was Chris Potter was doing Gambit, and I was playing actually Gambit's brother and a bunch of, like, a ton of other characters. And it's really cool when you're a utility voice person because, you know, that kind of actor. Um, because you don't just do one character in the day. You do, like, ten and make a lot more money. Thank you. But the cool part is you get to do a bunch of stuff and explore your creativity. When Chris left the show, they went, he's already playing his brother, let's just do it. You know, that type of thing. He's got to step up and be Gambit. Pretty amazing following in, in Chris's footsteps to take over as Gambit. Same thing happened with uh, Tony the Tiger. When Thurl passed, took on the role. Hopefully we keep doing it some more. Any other cartoons you work on? I noticed you did Hawkeye in Avengers. So Hawkeye was kind of cool because I actually liked the, the whole Clint Barton storyline. And I've done X the Owl and Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Sailor Moon, I've did a couple hundred voices, but I was known for Jedi and the Wise Man and Baby Jordan. That was a good one because I got to cry like a baby. And then do the uh, sort of Bruce willis -y type. Hey, you dummy, give me a bottle of milk, you know, that sort of thing. So it's kind of fun. When you were recording, especially X-Men and Avengers, were you doing it with the rest of the cast, or were you doing it mostly by yourself? Uh, sometimes we would do an uh, ensemble where you'd have a, uh, one, two, five people in the room. Uh, Avengers, for sure, the first few episodes we would do ensemble. But then what they do to speed things up is they'll take you in and do it separately so that you can whiz through it and, and get done. It's more fun with the cast because you get to mess around. Like on Yin Yang Yo, we, we just went crazy and they let us uh, break the rules, but we got some really cool performances. You are also a musician as well. We have a new record out. It's called Dreams with my friend Cassandra Kabinsky. We met together on a voiceover. Wow, who would have known? We were doing a voiceover for Coles and she had to sing really badly and um, <laughs> and I was the big voice guy for Coles and uh, we just hit it off and we started writing music together and we've raised money for autism we've raised money for animal rescue there's a song on this record called you get me and it's got lots of hits I'm now with Butch Patrick and how are you enjoying super mega fest it's super that's why they call it super mega fest because it's great of course you're Eddie monster from the monsters you know, I am, aren't I? How cool was it to be a little boy that turned into a werewolf? Every Well, the makeup every morning was kind of a pain in the ass, but it was only three days a week. But being on the show was the best. We had a, a great set, a great cast, a lot of things to play with, a lot of special effects. It was a one-of-a-kind show. And what did you learn from acting, acting alongside Al Lewis? Al taught me a lot about life experiences. Fred, I learned more about the acting techniques. But between the two of them, I got a very, very good crash course in, in the acting and the world around me. And how is it looking back at those shows so many years later? It's like having really good home movies at Halloween every day. And how was it when you came back for those reunions? Good. We always had a good time. And uh, I, I actually connected with them as an adult when I was in my 30s. And I got to know Yvonne DiCarlo late in her life. And Al and I and Pat Priest toured around together and uh, we really had a great time. I'm sad to see him gone, but I'm carrying on the, I'm munstering on on my own. You also had on an episode of The Monsters, Eddie Haskell, Ken Osmond guest starred. How was it working with Ken? Well, Ken and I actually did a lot of appearances together. He's a great guy and the fact that Joe Conley and Bob Moser had done Leave it to Beaver, they brought in a lot of people from the Beaver shows. Uh, Richard Deacon did a show, did an episode, Pikes Peak, so uh, they went to the well many times for people that had proven themselves to be good on uh, Leave it to Beaver. And what is, do you think the legacy of the Monsters is so many years later? Well, it's a little bit has to do with the 60s itself because there was an interesting time when talking horses and witches and genies and Martians were all the rage and very popular shows. But mostly I think it has to do with the family values that was instilled, that we were an unusual family. You know, each Marilyn thought we were normal and we thought she was unfortunate, but everybody else was scared of us. They thought she was beautiful. So the whole dynamic twist on, you know, don't judge a book by its cover and have uh, look for the beauty from within was a very strong thing today that's lacking. So a lot of people seem to enjoy watching the show for the family values. They tried to remake The Monsters a couple of years ago, and it failed. Could it ever come back, or do you think it is what it is? The Hollywood is, they're always trying to go to the well for old stuff. Uh, unfortunately, they'll never achieve what the original had, and not because they can't do it, not because the talent's not there, but it was the period that was done, and you can't duplicate time in history. You just, it's just not done that way. And unfortunately, they're just going to have to remember that the original was the best, and, and I wish them luck, but I don't think they're ever going to top it.
that was the 2019 Super Mega Fest. And as you can tell, it's an awesome Comic Con. I hope you come next year. My name is David Ciccarella. Thanks for watching. Congratulations, you are now officially a member of the Spider-Man Club.